digitalmusicnews.com. Uh, headline could have been, Joe Rogan admits to being a liar and a sellout, but they were nice. Uh, Joe Rogan confirms that Spotify censored his earlier shows. Quote, there were a few episodes they didn't want on their platform. Now, remember when I said Joe Rogan and Alex Jones and Spotify are lying? And everybody said, yeah, no, Adam, that's those guys are too respectful and respectable. There's no way they would do that to their I mean, Alex Jones would never lie to his audience. By the way, quick sidebar on that. Just saw the video of Alex Jones slamming Donald Trump in January 2019. Oh, you just now saw that? You just now yeah. are seeing that. Yeah, someone sent it to me yesterday because we were talking about Alex Jones on Twitter. And I was like, well, that makes it worse for Alex. He's not a sucker for Donald Trump. He's a fucking sellout. He was against him, and he asked his audience to support him anyway. That I wonder how much he was getting paid. If Donald Trump wanted to break off a few million for him, uh, I'm sure it would have been easy. But not as easy as it was for Spotify to break off $100 million to buy Joe Rogan and control his platform show and audience and to get his old episode censored like the one that I was on. How about that? And they came out after Joe Rogan got this $100 million deal with Spotify <clears throat> and uh, then said, uh, well, through Alex Jones first, which was, which was shady enough by itself. Like, Everybody's going, hey, man, you just got $100 million. Like, there were a lot of people asking Joe about <laughs> this. Like, hey, what happened to these old episodes? Did you sell out? Was this part of the deal? And they said it was technical glitches. And right away, I said, oh, really? You just paid someone $100 million for their podcast archive, and you can't afford to fix technical glitches to get audio transferred? from a YouTube video that's still up and onto the Spotify platform. So what is really interesting is like, is, am I banned from Spotify now? Like we, and, and just today we noticed, uh, apparently with our, our podcast distributor, Liberated Syndication, that we, we seem to be having issues with them too. Funny, funny how that works, right? And I, I want to say like, first, I, I don't, I mean, I, I, what, what do I judge Joe and Alex and Spotify here for? What are, what are they like, you know, what are they guilty of, right? Because Spotify, corporate giant. Um, oh, well, well, real quick, Adam, before you go too far in, I checked this just, I mean, I, I upload this. This is very new to me. It looks like every episode we've done in 2021 is gone. What? On Lipson. Yeah, the last episode here says December 30th, 2020. They just charged me for the first of the month, too. Right. Well, but that's my question. So it, I click on content and I see everything up to 2020, December 30th. That was the last show of that year. But every show in January and February is gone. And it looks right. like you can't find our page from searching Libsyn for it. Right. right. So now I'm asking, now it got me, now it has me asking, are we being censored shadow banned off of Libsyn? So I, I was talking to a, a potential sponsor for, for Adam versus the man today. And they said, oh yeah, where's your, excuse me, where's your uh, podcast? Where's your, where's your audio distributed? Because I can send them the YouTube channel is our you know biggest destination, whatever. And uh, then tried to find the Libsyn link. And it wasn't working. Very strange. A bigger challenge with censorship we'll come back to. Huh. Uh, but Joe Rogan, Lipson, Joe Rogan, or sorry, uh, Spotify, Alex Jones, Joe Rogan. We'll do them in that order. Spotify, major corporate giant, right? Like they are so big that it would be hard to imagine there not being some government corporate relations going on here. And it goes both ways, right? They go to the government and say, we'll give you money or we'll give you your, they go to politicians, right? And say to the politicians, we'll give you money if you do this as a politician. And then the government goes to the company and says, we'll let you stay in business if you censor these voices that challenge our racket that allows us to keep 
you in power and keep you going strong with your business, right? So I think Spotify there, uh, you know, could be completely innocent, right? They could have a gun to their head. I, 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 I've theorized this about Google before as well, you know, uh, is, is uh, Sergey Brin really a Hillary Clinton supporter? Or is he more concerned with getting suicided, right? Well, in Spotify's case, you know, they are this mechanism and they may have a gun to their head. But yes, they bought Joe Rogan for $100 million. They bought specifically the Joe Rogan experience, but they also bought his dishonesty. Now, let me tell the audience something right now. Like I would I would rather have my integrity <clears throat> than than the money. You know, I would rather uh, know that I'm, I'm being honest and doing the right thing. Um, and if I if I lied to you for a hundred million dollars, um, I, I'd find a way to let you know. And it seems like that's what Joe Rogan has done here, right? But a hundred million dollars. That's I want I want to in case anybody any of the censors are listening right now, I will stop doing Adam versus the man forever for a hundred million dollars, right? Like, yeah. So say so. It's CJ Jim. We're fucking out of here. And and it's not because yeah. we don't like the show <laughs> and it's not because we're in it for the money but i know that given what we're able to do with adam versus the man being relatively limited with with censorship and shadow banning that uh i i could do more good with 100 million dollars you know how many copies of freedom i could give away with 100 well 30 cents each i could give and, and distribute I, I could give away about uh 300 we for 100 million dollars i could give a copy of freedom to every man woman and child in america yeah Fuck yeah, I'd be out of here for $100 million. I would love you, my audience, yeah, for $100 million. Fuck you all, too. No, I'm just kidding. But we'd, we'd, we'd reach more people, right? Our he numbers just dipped, Adam. We've lost everybody. It went to zero. We, we are the losers today. <laughs> Am I not allowed to say fuck the audience? Is that the one thing? No, okay. no I mean, all the people that, that have been there during this whole thing is the audience. You can't say fuck the audience because if <laughs> You can't say but, fuck. You just can't say fuck the audience. That's only but, status. Adam says that. Shit. Yeah, that's but, a status <laughs> Adam thing. But CJ, Joe Rogan did that. He said, "Fuck the audience. I'm going to lie to you and deceive you, and I'm going to sell out for a hundred million dollars. And I don't even have a cause that I believe in to put this towards. I'm just going to take the money and run. And fuck you guys who have helped build the show. Fuck all of your my prior guests." I'm going to take the $100 million. I'm going to go hang out with Alex Jones in Texas. And and the truth and integrity can go to hell. That's, what, he, that's, that's what Joe Rogan said. Isn't Joe Rogan opening up a comedy scene and, and you know, he wants it to be like this big thing out there in Texas? Like, what does he think is going to happen when his previous guests and we can start opening up to public events after this, you know, COVID bullshit's over? Uh, and in Texas, they are, you know, hey, have at it, go out and be free, uh, you know, they're, you know, and so that's going to start coming to fruition for him. What's to say his prior guests that have been censored don't just show up like Alex Jones. And uh, I mean, he's been friends with Joe Rogan, they say for years. Alex they Jones was Spotify smokescreen for all this. And not only was he the first one to lie to the public. But he was Joe Rogan's excuse to say, I'm not controlled. And that was a lie because Joe Rogan had Alex Jones on after the switch to Spotify, even though his prior episodes weren't there. True. And so I wonder, like, and, and I, am I, I'm not the only one whose prior episodes were deleted, obviously, but it's sort of like they censor conservatives to cover up the real censorship of libertarians. And this is a perfect, real time, specific example of that where both Alex Jones and I had been on Joe Rogan's show. Joe Rogan goes to Spotify, they censor all of us. They use Alex Jones to come out and say, well, they're, they're, yeah, don't get don't get upset. They're, they're not censoring my episodes with Joe, it's just technical glitches. And I so identify I as a libertarian, Adam. I'm a, I'm a libertarian. I, 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 uh, I identify as a libertarian and, you know, 1776 will happen again. No. Well, hey, no. I can self-identify as an Apache helicopter, and it doesn't turn my dick into propeller blades. I'm sorry, Mr. Jones. But with Joe Rogan here, that's what he did. He sold out his audience, and now it's falling apart. You know, so what's Alex Jones guilty of here? Alex is is way more like deliberately engaged, complicit in this deception, and he didn't even get paid off. Although who knows? Maybe he did behind the scenes. We don't, we don't know, obviously. 
but he did get a, he did get able to come uh, a with, with the last amount, by Spotify. A suspicious amount of uh, pharma nut or excuse me, a suspicious amount of nutraceuticals <laughs> and toothpaste have been sold at the Infowars store. Super male vitality. Ah! <laughs> All right. Okay. So Jim's enjoying this smoking Jim, along. Yeah, Jim, Jim knows what to do. <clears throat> But to Joe Rogan, you know, he came out and admitted this. So back to the news article, uh, CJ, if you want to pull this up. Uh, Joe Rogan confirms that Spotify censored his earlier shows. There were a few episodes they didn't want on their platform. For months, Joe Rogan fans were left wondering what happened to a number of earlier shows that went missing following the Spotify transition. Now we have the answer. Oh, yeah, they were just missing. Whoops. The answer to the riddle came from Joe Rogan himself, who has now confirmed that Spotify simply refused to transfer a number of his earlier shows as a condition of their $100 million exclusive partnership. And Joe Rogan happily agreed to it. During the transition of Rogan's podcast episodes onto the Spotify platform in 2020, fans quickly noticed that multiple past episodes were glaringly omitted. Those included interviews with controversial figures like Milo Yiannopoulos, Gavin McInnes, and Alex Jones who was separately banned by Spotify. See, they mentioned the conservatives, not the libertarians being censored, or libertarian in this case. Additionally, Rogan issued a rare public apology and correction over his claim that left-wing anarchists had set fires in Oregon, a point that was made during an interview with Douglas Murray. The information was wrong. The Rogan's mea culpa was highly unusual and believed to be the result of pressure from activist Spotify staffers. Now, uh, about this, you know, there's, there's this... Uh, Subplot, subplot here that it's not just Spotify corporate, right? It's 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 the staffers who, who are concerned with making sure that everything on their platform is politically correct, which is really not what it's about. It's not about being polite or politically correct or sensitive. It's about banning a message that is a challenge to how you get paid off. Now, there's so much money behind the racket that we are taking on with this message. It's it's almost impossible to say who's bribing who, who's threatening who, because for for hundred, I mean, how many people would kill for a hundred million dollars? Certainly, you would lie. I mean, Joe Ro Joe Rogan would lie to millions of people in his audience for a hundred million dollars, right? Alex Jones would lie to the public for to help his friend get a hundred million dollars. I don't know, uh, or or to keep the deal, but. This is, this might be the opportunity for us to really take on censorship. Now, some people have said, well, Adam, you go to this crypto or this independent platform. None of those are reliable either. Even, even oh, we'll go to email. There's no email service that, that I've used that we haven't had issues with. And uh, for content, for the message of freedom. So, <clears throat> I, I I would call now on everyone in my audience, at least, to uh, to boycott Joe Rogan, to boycott Alex Jones, and to boycott Spotify until this is really properly addressed. And I would say that that would be Joe Rogan coming on this show. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, in all honesty, I don't think he's going to. I, I think he's going like, to. Isn't yeah. there some like you know? In in <clears throat> again, correct me where I'm wrong. But in, in the podcast media that I've been in for the last year, it's normally customary for you to go on somebody's reciprocation. show. The reciprocation yeah. of uh, being on their show is is usually just a common courtesy, more in a, a professional courtesy, actually. Actually experiencing that today with our guest today. <laughs> <laughs> right, like we are actually doing that. Which, by the way, I was uh, the link did get to him a little uh, late, but it's still there. He's active, and so hopefully he'll be able to click on. I'll call him after this. But yeah, for Joe, I mean, nobody can say you weren't on the Joe Rogan experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. They can't. They can't take this from you. That experience of having that conversation, you know, it's still there. So you know that that interview still exists if you're looking for it. But the but the fact that there is a censorship to it makes me go, well, what are they trying to not have on their platform? What is what is that threat that you're identifying in, in your speech? Because 
or that they're identifying, I shouldn't say you identifying, they're identifying a threat within your speech, within that window, within that, that thing. Uh, and it, and you know, there's, we've had plenty of controversial guests on this show from white supremacists to trans sheriff, you know, candidates to, I mean, we're talking, we've had some incredible people on this show. We even had some legitimate dirtbag Republicans and Democrats. Right. I mean, yeah. And so to me, it all just goes back to professionalism. Uh, you know, we started when we started this, you know, we made it clear you were on Joe Rogan. These are all facts. Um, you know, we bring this up every so often. This is, you know, I wouldn't say we beat this horse daily. It's more like when the, <laughs> well, the as, story as Joe developed. Logan slash Alex Jones come up in the news and then uh, every now and then my name is attached when they, when they include the whole list of these are all and they stop doing that. I don't know if you noticed. When this first happened, oh, here's the list of all the episodes, you know, that have been censored. Now they cover it, and it's like, oh yeah, Milo and Gavin and Alex Jones, right? So, uh, Jim, I, I know you're you're putting some thought into this. Do you have anything to say to Mr. Rogan? Um, you've been challenged, man. Don't be a pussy. You know, that's all I can say. <laughs> I mean, you got a hundred million dollars, Mr. Rogan. I mean, you shouldn't be afraid to just come on and have a talk with Adam Koch. Every, I mean, everybody knows that if you're being truthful and you're being forthright and you're being honest, you have nothing to hide. You you'd be willing to go on anybody's show and defend your position, and, unless you unless you know you're wrong. You know, you ain't gonna come on the show if you know you're wrong. At least so, clarify. At least clarify. You know, I think you owe it to your guests to clarify. I mean. That's kind of my thought is you're a guest in his home, you know, in his studio, in his environment. And, you know, he even says you can be back on. You can, you know, like he'll have you back on, wants to do it again. Like the, I listened to all the interview, clipped it out. I mean, it to me, it's it's almost like you have to wonder if he was told specifically a list of names that you will one never mention again let alone go on their shows. So yeah, possible. you know, like there's, there's a chance that he'll just forget you exist. And then they'll let Alex Jones, Milo be that alt voice that they'll kind of bully and demonize. And so, yeah, it just leaves up too much speculation. So of course we would love to have Joe Rogan on Adam versus the man and to have him sit down for not just a half hour rink and dink interview. No, same format, long talk format, just you and, and uh, Joe Rogan and to just have this conversation for the audience. I think that's, that would help go a long way. I know in libertarian circles that Alex Jones and Milo is not what's representing that libertarian principle voice. You know, we want, we want to send up Adam to discuss libertarian principles with Joe Rogan. I mean, uh, Joe himself has admitted to voting for not only Gary Johnson, but Joe Jorgensen. So to me, it's just kind of like, uh, and again, yeah, sure. What did he actually check in the box? I'm not going to play that game. I'm going to go by what he says publicly on his show. So for me, and we, we've had Joe Jorgensen uh, on this. Uh, so why wouldn't we be able to have a conversation with a Joe Rogan. I mean, what's he doing? Honestly, I mean, so well, I mean, Marcus, should we have Marcus reach out? Should we have yeah, Of course. Well, I, I mean, I, we'll, we'll send I, we'll, we'll get this segment to in, in front of Joe one way or another. But I want to say, you know, what's what's he doing? What's he planning? Well, if he had integrity, he would realize that he's got this 100 million dollars. And I don't know if he gets it's it's a 100 million dollar deal is that, you know, over 10 years with options, blah blah blah, who knows how much he actually got but he knows that he got that money by allowing himself to succumb to the great evil of censorship. You know, Tyrion Lannister, right? When you cut out a man's tongue, you do not prove him a liar, only that you fear what he has to say. So I, I would hope, I mean, if I had a hundred million dollars, I'd be launching a sense. I'd be launching a new network, a new, a new platform. Uh, we, we, you know, that was actually censorship free. The, the, like all, all the ideas that we've discussed on the show, even, like with Facebook, you don't have to censor everything to make a platform, you know, content safe. You can put screens on top of things and say, hey, Morning. did someone flag this? Click through. Simple as that. But when they cut you off from talking. Now, I, I want to finish this article and, and, and then we'll move on because it is it is relevant to uh, Rogan's 
situation and how he did this, right? It's not like he came out <clears throat> uh, in, in in a press conference and said, ta-da, look, here's what really happened. I got censored and I'm calling it out now. He kind of let it slip. So here it is. In a recent podcast discussion with comedian Fahim Anwar, Joe Rogan stated that Spotify is now completely hands-off when it comes to his podcast, though that wasn't the case during the early days of the deal. But despite his frequent declarations regarding free speech, Rogan seemed more than happy to delete his earlier shows to seal the deal. Ironically, <clears throat> the topic of Spotify came up in the context of corporate censorship, specifically Netflix's censorship of an episode of Hasan Minhaj's Patriot Act following pressure from the Saudi Arabian government. Uh, quote, when I saw that Hassan shows pulled because of the criticism of Saudi Arabia, I was like, what, Netflix? It made me think like, man, I don't know if that's the place. I don't know if that's the place anymore because I feel like there's too much corporate involvement. There's too much influence on content. And Anwar responded, and anytime anything gets big enough, you're going to get shit like that. There's going to be strings attached. And Rogan quipped while letting out a laugh, quote, yeah, that's the criticism of me being on Spotify. They don't give a fuck, man. They haven't given me a hard time at all, Rogan stated before spilling the beans on the censorship bit. And so he's lying right before telling the truth. There, quote, there were a few episodes they didn't want on their platform, and I was like, okay, I don't care. But other than that, in terms of what I do in the future, the big test was having Alex Jones on. Oh, really? That was the big test? The guy who's been approved by the mainstream media as their far-right corporate punching bag for decades since he got his start on AM radio? Joe Rogan, really, that that's your test? Really? So that answers the question that Rogan insisted there won't be further corporate oversight moving forward. Quote, a lot of people are like, they're telling Joe Rogan what he can and can't do. They're not. They're not. <clears throat> and we're supposed to believe you now as you are lying. Like, I mean, you lied like from one sentence to another. They don't give a fuck. They haven't given me a hard time at all. Oh, but there were a few episodes that... I, I mean, this is this... I, I, I wonder about this because like, I've never heard accusations about Joe Rogan's integrity before this. Have you? Like, there, 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 Joe Rogan, I mean, he's had controversies with what he said and guests he's had on, but never a, a question of his integrity. I mean, now he's lying on his own show? Am I am I am I off in my analysis at all here, guys? Up, oh, sorry, I was muted. Yeah, so uh, you know, this is kind of the issue that this show raised the very moment that we put up the headline. You know, Joe Rogan has a hundred million dollar deal with Spotify. Uh, just for the record, I haven't watched Joe Rogan's podcast since the move to Spotify. If they're not gonna have, if you're not gonna have Adam Kokesh's interview it on, uh, I know your message is being censored. Why am I going to, you know? supports you in any facet way shape or form especially as his executive producer so i haven't watched alex jones or joe rogan since all this censorship and conceding to censorship was challenged when we first put it out so just just again for the record we've challenged his integrity since the beginning and you can correct me if i'm wrong I, yep. uh, we we have watched an episode since he went to spotify me and adam anyways because we watched the kanye west interview remember and we were dumber I for felt having dumber afterwards. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was it, it basically confirmed like his selloutness, his his passoverness. He 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 now I believe has no matter how vague or specific it is, he has a list of disapproved content, stuff he's not allowed to bring up, narratives he's not allowed to explore. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm, well, I, I'm, I would think it's a little more complicated than that. Like, he genuinely goes, let me push back and see if they'll let me have Alex Jones on and see what happens. Yeah. Part of it is uh -huh. they, they know that Alex Jones has more of a platform than I do to fight back with because Alex Jones uh, was blown up by the establishment through AM radio and then YouTube until they were done with him under Trump and said, you know, now we want to use him as a punching bag and, and an example of justifying censorship instead. Right. Sort of like if you want to censor libertarians, because they're the real threat to the duopoly, you know, you create some conservative monster 
and then and 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 let him become this monster and have a big platform and then censor him and say see censorship is good it's necessary and then it doesn't even matter that we've been censoring the libertarians this whole time so i mean that's that's all i have to say about that i'll just repeat joe rogan uh you know we'd love to have you on the show uh give you a chance to uh, do something about this. I I don't know. Or, or for, you know, I'd be happy to come out to Texas and be on your show. I'll drive out anytime. You know, and I, I respect that even though your platform is significantly diminished thanks to the corporate blessings of Spotify and, and YouTube, you, you have a much bigger platform than I do. And I would take any opportunity available to, to reach more people with my message. But I think what CJ said is, is so critical that it, if you know that someone is allowing their message to be censored, you are inviting a distorted worldview into your head by tuning into their program. And that's a that's a really fucked up disservice to do to, to any audience. Um, and Joe Rogan is not the first, obviously, to do that. But you would think, you know, as a podcaster in this day and age, you'd have that freedom. Well. Apparently, that freedom can be bought for a hundred million dollars. Um, why are you showing Joe on on my episode? <laughs> show, <laughs> show me on the all have turtle compass is telling you what to do. You just got to figure out a way to avoid all the pitfalls in life that can keep you from accomplishing that or going in that direction. Everybody's is different. You just got to find it. You dirty bitches. This is not a fucking self-help show. All right. <laughs> what have you done to me? Dude, thank you very Fuck, much we for have, coming on, We haven't on, talked man. about masturbating for like an hour now. Well, that's a, that's a good amount of time to take off. Um, if you ever want to come back and do it again, man, let's do it again. Do it Fuck again in the yeah. future. If you're ever yeah. in L.A. again, and now that you're a legal medical patient, <laughs> I'm sure you have to come back to get medicated. Um, uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, Adam Kokesh. Please watch his podcast. Um, AdamVersusTheMan.com. AdamVersusTheMan.com. Follow him on Twitter. It's so weird to think that we're on a clip and make that go viral. Joe, just a clip of Joe saying, watch Adam Kokesh, AdamVersusTheMan.com. Just put a clip like that and start flooding yeah, man, like, yeah, someone did make a remix of that. Joe Rogan promoting Adam versus the man. We'll see what happens. It's so funny to think, though, like, as much as I feel like I'm small time because we have a small audience because we've been so censored and shadow banned, uh, that there that all the biggest players in the game know my name and that's why we're in this position joe rogan alex jones know who i am when my name gets mentioned they get a headache because someone is going you can't talk to that guy because he's the real threat i mean that's it's nice to believe that adam but i think it's deeper than that i think that it's more like they would sell you out for a dollar and they did and, you know, using you as a guest in that sense to just come on the show, talk for a couple hours, promote ideas and have this, you know, kind of philosophical question about libertarianism and then to then misrepresent it and molest that conversation into, well, this is an Adam Kokesh libertarian. This is a Milo or Alex Jones libertarian. And then we're going to present these two as that alt voice versus an Adam Kokesh. So yes, I think the Joe Rogan diehards know who you are. I think that it's letting that person that's never heard your message or how you present the conversation around freedom and libertarianism and volunteerism is what is the threat. I don't think that it's, I don't, I would, I would venture to guess that Joe Rogan would even come on here if he did to tell you it's not personal. It was business. I would venture to guess that that's going to be the excuse. If I'm, oh, just I'm sure, I'm sure it's not personal uh, against me at all with any of these guys. It's just like, oh, he's that guy. Well, we're not going to serve that cause. We're going to serve the cause of statism and authoritarianism and the status quo.